Coach, what is fight week like for you now? I mean, you've been here so many times, title fights over and over, you know, the rank. What's it like for you? Is it still exciting? You still get that edge? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's just another fight, you know? Whether I win or lose, I tell you guys all the time. I go back home, I get in the gym with Matt, he works me. I get in the gym with uh, Brad, he works me. I get back in the gym and wait for the next call. I come back out to fight week, chill in the room, play my video games. Then when it, there's been a time when I've been out here, and I was like, Matt, we should go do this, we should go do this. You go, DJ, you got a fucking fight on side. And I'm like, oh, shit, that's right. So for me, there's no point in getting hyped up, amped up, nervous. Then a the day, I'm going to fight on Saturday. And there's going to be two things going to happen. I'm either going to win or I'm either going to lose. When you look at it that way, shit's easy. Hey, what was, what your, was your reaction to uh, Connor's tweet yesterday, retiring, getting pulled from UFC 200? Uh, he'll be back, man. You guys don't, you know, not everything that shine is gold. He'll be back. Uh, you know, I think it's good for the UFC. The UFC need to, they need to start uh, stepping up and doing things like that. If you think if you think you're higher than UFC, if you think you're better than all the other fighters, then maybe you should get pulled. So I think I think it's a good discipline. A fight is a fight. There's rules and regulations for the fight. If it's legal, it's legal. So there's nothing dirty about it. So at the end of the day, it's a fight. I'm not. It's one of them things where. Do I want to go in there and be nice to somebody? Do you think they're going to be nice to me? He's staring across me across the cage and like, you telling me like, if he had the opportunity to do anything, he'll do it. So, fight is a fight. Yeah, you know, um, well, over the last year, it's been really tough to be a Josh Jones fan, for sure. I, I definitely I definitely haven't made it easy. Um, and I wanted to do something positive. I wanted to um, save the day for these guys. You know, uh, UFC 151 happened a long time ago. It's something that some people still hold against me uh, to this day. So um, getting in here uh, for all these fans, you know, saving this card, um, I felt as if it was just it'd give me some brownie points with my fans. I got to ask you about this Conor McGregor situation. Everyone's buzzing about it, and 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 you in particular because you've been a champion for a long time, and you're asked to do a lot of things promotionally and whatnot. When you read what he wrote today, did you kind of sympathize with him? Yeah, I understood him. I've, I've, I've never picked sides between the UFC and Conor McGregor. I say they're both doing their thing. Conor does what he wants. The man's got toys that spit fire. UFC has thousands of athletes underneath its, uh, its promotion. So, yeah, I understand what he means, man. You guys had to come from Iceland. He doesn't want to break camp. I'm a huge believer. I don't like to break camp either. Um, I've done it before, only specifically for UFC events. <laughs> but other people have asked me to come. Uh, to do things and I say no because I'm, I'm in a military training because I believe at the end of the day you do all the promotional stuff you want at the end of the day if you're not fucking winning your fights it makes no difference like you could be the most liked guy ever well not now nowadays you can be the most liked guy ever and still lose fights and still make more money than the other guy who beat you up um, but you know I understand where he's coming from and it makes sense I think uh, I think he might be burned out maybe I mean he's had a lot of fights back to back he's done a world tour before with the Aldo thing kind of the same thing with, uh, with this guy um, RDA um, but the three months out from a fight, I mean, the, that's a long time. So it's not like they're asking unrealistic things. Um, it's all it's all normal stuff. All of us as athletes, all of us fighters, we, we do it. You plan for it. Coming off a loss, I know how he feels. You know, he wants to spend his time training. Um, I think this is this right here is what made Conor McGregor Conor McGregor. But at the same time, you know, his fight skills back it up. So like, he can talk well. He had to train, you know, his butt off to get to where he's at. Um, and, and coming off a loss, he's 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 looking for uh, he's looking for that lifeline again. And the closest lifeline to him is his coaches. So that's what you turn to first. And now the coach is going to say, forget all this. Let's get back to what got you there. And that's what he's thinking about. You know, let me get back to that training. Let me get back to that. That's what I would think. That's what I was told. You know, when I, when I lost my belt, Duke's like, all right, let's forget about everything else. And let's get back to the gym. Let's get back to the, to the basics and uh, get to what got you to that position. And that was just hard work in the gym. Speaking of coaches, you've been in Albuquerque. And I understand yeah. you went there. First, it was supposed to be for a few days, but you really enjoyed it. Yeah. And you stayed for a few weeks. Yeah. Is this your new team now? Not my new team, but I'll definitely be cross training. Um, I gotta stay in Milwaukee. Um, I'm, I'm a loyal dude. You know, Duke's never crossed me, turned his back on me. We had the highest highs and, and, and the lowest lows together. Um, at the same time, having Greg Jackson, the first conversation I had with the guy, I knew he was a genius. Like he's like a Jedi when he comes to to making fighters feel confident. You know, he, he made me just just two three sentences he said just made so much sense. It's like you know what I've been thinking that I didn't know how to like put it the way he put it and uh you know he just made me feel like I, I i i with this mindset and this this the way i'm training anything's possible i'm just saying in order for the ufc to get to the nfl the mlb the nba there's things that need to be done in order for corporate america corporate sponsors to get involved with mixed martial arts if everybody's able to do everything then it changes everything but i'm a big conor mcgregor fan 
I really am, and I enjoy the dude. I like watching him. And him not being here, it's, uh, you know, these guys are working their butt off. You know, Ronda, you know, they pretty much, all these guys, we all have obligations. Mm. At the same time, I can I can see how uh, how Connor can, 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 yeah, can, can never go against Connor, oh, yeah. dude. What's already, the reaction been like? Already getting hate mail, dude. <laughs> <laughs> His thing's MMA fighting. Yeah. <laughs> I like Connor. He, uh, I, I, so I, I, I'm a big fan of his, man. I just feel like sometimes the UFC needs to do things sure. in order for the company to grow, to get into corporate America. Let's talk about your moment. It, it's a, it's a massive one on Saturday. Your chance to become the UFC flyweight champion. I'm wondering if over there, Demetrius Johnson, if you believe in your heart of hearts that he respects you as a challenge, that he thinks that you are bringing something different to the table that all these other guys from Benavides to Dotson haven't brought to the table. Do you think he fears you as a fighter? I would hope so. I mean, I would hope, you know, maybe fear, maybe respect is probably a better word. Mm -hmm. I believe he respects uh, the fact that I've, I've, I've reached a high level. I'm undefeated. Um, like I said, I want the best Demetrius Johnson that the world has ever seen because I don't want excuses. I really don't. And I don't, and I, I don't, I don't mean to like, you know, sound arrogant or whatnot, but I want the best of the best. I'm in my prime. I'm 29 years old. So is he. Let's uh, let's give the let's give the fans a show. But if I know if I'm healthy and I do everything right, Ariel, man, you cannot measure heart. You cannot measure hunger, and that's something that I have. You know, Efrain, he could take a good shot. Uh, in the first round, I hit him with a lot of shots, and he was taking them pretty good. Uh, I landed like two or three right hands that would normally daze. Uh, you know, I mean, I was trying to look at his eyes, see if they danced a little bit, but he can take a damn good shot. So, uh, you know, when I did that in the first, I touched him a lot. Uh, I didn't really try and wrestle him, you know, I felt like I could have, but, uh, you know, I wanted to put on a good show. So in the second, I tried to hurt him, and, and that kind of threw me off my game a little bit. So in the third, I got back to what I was doing and what, what, what made me successful in the first, and, uh, you know, that, that's what got the W. So it was just trying to touch him a lot, you know. If my wrestling was there, I'd take it. That's what ended up happening. Now you're, you're a pretty high prospect, and taking that first loss, how long did it take you to get that out of your mind preparing for this fight? Uh, it took me a couple weeks, you know. Uh, you know, like I said, I thought it was a fluke, you know. Shit happens, you know. You, you, you roll with the punches, you keep it moving. Uh, if anything, I, I think that, that elevated the mental aspect of the game for me. For this camp, I focus more on the mental than the, than the physical. Uh, I think a lot of guys know I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just as talented as, as anybody in this division. Uh, you know, I can do skill for skill. I can go with anybody. So uh, for me, the most important thing was getting the mentality aspect of it down, uh, keeping that championship mentality. So, uh, you know, that's, that's what I focus on. That's what got me the W. So uh, in the end, when I could have pushed for a finish, uh, I got the W. So, you know, it's, it's a step in the right direction. North cut. Now, since he came off the show, everyone seen his fight there on TV and thought this guy's going to be the next huge thing. Did that play any factor at all with you or mentally going into this? Uh, for sure, man. Uh, not in a, a vengeful way, but, you know, I feel like I've earned my, my way here. And, uh, you know, I don't have anything against a guy getting a chance on through a, a TV show. Uh, it's, it's good publicity for the UFC. It uh, makes the organization look good. And, you know, it improves the, the, the fighters in the organization. But I feel like I, I earned my way for sure. So I kind of take it personally when a guy gets a chance like that. Um, I went for a whole year without a fight before I signed with the UFC because nobody wanted to fight me. So, uh, you know. I definitely use it as a chill. We talked about that too. I, I use it as motivation, you know, to go in there and, and prove that you got to earn your way in here, man. It ain't as easy as you think it is. So I think I did that tonight for sure. Got a little tired, you know, ring rust. I, this inactivity, fighting once a year stuff has been killing me. If I could just stay consistent and fight every few months, I, I don't think I would ever get tired because I'm, I'm known to be a cardio machine. And I know it probably didn't look like I was that tired in there because I kept throwing. I'm a volume puncher. But I need to work on probably setting down a little more and you know turning my body over a little better and stuff like that. But besides that, I felt like every, everything came together. You mentioned the nightmares and the, the stress of it all. Is that something that you've worked with with somebody to sort of get through and deal with? Or is it just a, this is what camp is like for me, I'll roll with it? I think it's something that you just kind of 
it's it's part of it and I think a lot of fighters whether they admit it or not they they have those fears they have that anxiety um, I think it's just like your first day of school you know you're always gonna toss and turn and you know what's my outfit gonna be like and how's it gonna be I, I think it's just something that comes with it does it feel worth it to, to go through that stress <laughs> and the nightmares and all that like is the payoff good enough I'll say when you get your hand raised, it, it is because, you know, there's all that like, whew, it was worth it and, you know, everything that comes with it, you know, it's it's definitely like a huge rush. I think anyone who fights is kind of an adrenaline junkie, you know, and when you go out there and, and you win, it's amazing and when you lose, it's high highs and it's low lows. Uh, um, Chris Clay, as you know, I don't think he's ranked up there yet, so I mean, I'm still, still 15, 14, I, I'm not in the top 10 yet. I don't feel like I belong in the top 10 yet, so I still have some work to do, obviously. And uh, I know I'll, I will get there. I will get there with the right work, with the right people. Uh, went out to Albuquerque for a little bit. Got some work in Milwaukee. So uh, definitely changed my perspective on a lot of things. Um, just like I said, becoming a better martial artist and growing as, a, as an individual, as, a, as an adult, and taking this opportunity, not so lately. You know, I, at first I was just like, I made it in the UFC, I made it. And now I'm in the UFC and I have goals. And I still have a lot of growing to do for those goals. Um, I mean, it's the way that I fight. Like I say in another interviews, it's just the right Yair Rodriguez style. I, I cannot do another stuff because it's the way that I fight. It's the, it's the way that I used to fight since I'm a kid. Um, of course, I try to, to practice more on my basics, my, my basic stuff, my basic boxing. I know my boxing is not, pretty good, is not that good yet. I'm getting on it. Um, and I work every day uh, to be, like, like you said, like less flashy. But for now, I want to try to be the same Yair Rodriguez as always. Yeah, I felt really good tonight. Um, I, I had a game plan. My coach staff gave me a solid game plan. And uh, Natal's a tough dude. It stuck to the game plan and come on over the win. It was, uh, yeah, what more can you ask for? I'm very happy with my performance. Uh, that's I try to put all the time, go there, give my best. I don't do the game plan. My, my game plan is go there and give my best, do everything I do in the gym. And I'm very happy, man. He's definitely one of the best in the world. He's number three in the rank. I think uh, this win put me very close, close to the title shot soon. And now I feel now it's my time. Now I'm ready to get the belt for sure. Yeah, honestly, I felt like I was. That was part of our game plan as a camp. I really did believe I was going to dominate the clinch. Uh, coming from a wrestling background, I felt really strong. It was that first knee that he hit me with. I think he said it during the interview too. He heard me grunt and uh, I took him down. I could have held him out a little longer, but I was still trying to catch my breath. And it was that one knee that really did it. And uh, at, at that time, when you get hit to the body, you don't even worry about your face no more. So I just started kind of protecting my body, like hanging my head down. And uh, he did a good job. He attacked, he, he attacked my body. I underestimated his clinch. And he hit me to the body on both sides. And I think he, you know, he, he did a good job, man. I, I underestimated his clinch. I really thought the, the plan was to, to take him there and then, you know, slowly, slowly rustle him. But uh, th that knee was a difference. And then he just, he, just, he just beat me up with knees. And that was the biggest thing. I never expect anything. I just go out there, but I knew that he likes to fight in a clinch. That's where he likes to rest. And I knew when he takes people down, he likes to lay in guard. He doesn't posture up past guard and start a submission game. So I was like, okay, so if I get taken down, you're just going to lay there. And I tried I try to elevate him, but he put his hips back, and I was like, perfect. Then I just kicked him off and got up and then kept on going. You know, I'm my own biggest critic. And out there, I was seeing all types of openings, you know, and I just wasn't pulling the trigger on, on a good 50, 60% of them. Uh, you know, I was just, just going for the, the real easy ones, like, you know, like a sidekick. I was... That was like so open and it was out of his punching range. But you know, boxing wise and stuff, I just, something inside of me was like, yo, like don't get caught with a big hand, you know, play it smart, play it smart. And just way too like, way too um, hesitant in there. Um, so yeah, 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 I was just, I don't know. I'm grateful for a lot, but you know, I'm still a little disappointed. Just know there's a much higher level inside of me. Um, I, you know, I'm not one to just fight last minute opponents like that. And um, I switched up to a big old hard, heavy hit in Southpaw. And I was, I was so primed uh, for Daniel Cormier. So, 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 you know, 
I'm not going to be too disappointed because I believe that I'm going to move and groove um, when I actually face this style that I've been thinking about for seven months.